What we are looking at here, people, is an all original RC tent. Yeah. This is from one of our uh, really nice customers. Uh, Steen Customs has been coming here for years. <laughs> I think he's going to get this back. Yep. We will refer to him as Lucky Phil. Mm -hmm. yeah. Lucky Phil purchased this very vehicle in in Hong Kong when his auntie was overseas. Mm. He was only 12. Needless right. to say, he's not 12 now. Right. Many years have passed since 1984. Mm. I'd go as far as to say 40. Mm. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm good with you'd, that. You'd say that, about 40 years? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so he was young at the time, and at the time he had a Tamiya SRB. Uh, F-150 and AYK-556 Bajar Bison. He's still got that AYK. He mm. showed pictures of it, didn't he, when he was mm. in? That's very, very rare. That's fantastic. So a bit special that he's had this since new. Yeah, yeah. he's had this since brand new. Mm. The RC-10 was the first car that he built from scratch. He was 13 years old. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and the, the body on it is actually an original RC-10 that came in the kit by AE America, mm. Team Australia America. So they, used yeah. to so they have, had that service. They used to have a service where they would paint bodies for you. I didn't even know that that was a thing. Mm. So he sent the body to be not. painted by Associated. Mm -hmm. In those days, you had to mail the company and they would confirm the... ...whatever parts you had, send them back to you. Mm. So, so they've painted this. They've painted it. Who do you think painted it? Was Gene? Uh, maybe Roger Curtis. Curtis. Not sure. Not sure. Oh, God, these tyres are so hard. Hard as Hades. Are they? Oh. Oh, they are too. Oh, they do. They've no but have a look on the overhead mm -hmm. and have a look at the body because I reckon for 1984, <laughs> that's, that, that's, that's what, quite the paint job. I, I, I've it? had a look inside and had a look at this, and this is all hand cut and hand painted. I'm thinking, that's a lot of work. I and couldn't it, be bothered. And it would have been done, I can only assume, with pressure packs. Yeah. Do you think it would have been done with airbrush? Well, I think there was Pactra around then, so maybe. Mm, airbrushes sure. have been around for a very, very long but time. I love, the, I love the pinstripes. Like I said, it's nothing compared to some of the work we see now, but mm. the, the textured flag, the waving flag. But there's flag. a lot of work in it still. You see how the colours are quite solid? You, yeah. you would imagine that's probably a spray can, wouldn't you? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's surprisingly intricate. And this part here, Pilf. Uh, Phil painted. Mm. Yeah, I was going to say that. I reckon Phil did that because <laughs> he, he definitely really, did that. Yeah, Phil, that looks shit. So let's have a <laughs> let's have a look at what an RC10 looked like in 1984. And to all you guys that have got re rays and stuff like that, like, okay, but it's, this isn't a re re This is an original this original. Is an original dig. Now it's called an A stamp. And what's what's an A stamp mean? A stamp Tony? is the first production run of RC10s. And how can you tell it's an A stamp? You can tell it's an A stamp, surprisingly, by the A that's just there. Okay. And how many of these would, would they I, have made that, at the time? I don't know. Okay. But um, So did it go for like 10 years or I, one year? Oh, or? I think it only went for maybe a year, if, if that. Okay. Then after the A stamp came the B stamp. Wow. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. But the other way to tell an A stamp car, although it's not you know, 100%, Certain is mm. the, the anodizing on these ones is usually a little bit lighter. Yeah, it looks quite light. Ones. Yeah, it's like a latte color, isn't it? Yeah, Ooh, latte. Now, you've got latte. My oh. now you've got my attention. You can but, see the tires have got flat spots so on them where it's been sitting on a shelf and this, stuff. This is the original six gear transmission, yeah, mm -hmm. not the stealth. So, th this is all original. So, um, it's a it's a wreck. Phil's got himself something very special here. So on the sixth gear, the differential was actually in the spur. Yeah, here. right. Yep. I was just admiring that before, actually. Yeah. So the diff is actually in there. So the differential is very easy to adjust by taking off the cover and just adjusting yeah. that nut. Yeah. Whereas now that's where the slipper clutch is. Yeah. Yeah. So you have the slipper clutch and the diff down lower in the change. Mm. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I said it was brilliant engineering, but I know Master Joe never liked it. Yeah. Oh really? I said that crap. Oh, but yeah. compare that to a frog. And, and as, I I said, you good. Said, as I said to you before, if it was any good, why aren't they all still up there? The shoemakers were like that too, weren't they? Didn't they have the high mounted? Oh, they did some stuff. Yeah. Because I remember it was like a drum down the bottom. They had yeah. three three belts on the rear end. Yes. They, they were prone to yeah. doing funky stuff, weren't they? Mm. Yeah. The shoemaker. Oh, no. yeah. Cecil was way out there. So, mm. yeah. So, this, this is, is a cool car. An all original 1984 A stamp.
Mm. And, and that the, is the lucky is re remarkably unmolested, so I don't think he's run at a lot. He has played with it. Yeah, but, but there's hardly any scratches. The yeah, scratches are few the there. Played, and that's about it. And some of the um, some of the screw heads are a little bit the worse for wear. And I think he's replaced some of the screws. It's mm. fair to say. I don't yeah. think they would have been hex head back in the day. Yeah, but it's a basically a very original. Oh, these were hex head. Un oh, are they? Imperial hex. Yeah. Yeah. Like all these screws are hex as well. Yeah. Oh, there yes. you go. So it's it's. But these okay. aluminium ones were always Phillips. Yeah. No, they're, they're they actually aluminium? very soft. Why? It must be for Yokomo weight, use, yeah? Yokomo use the same screws, right? They use the same mm. screws in their bulkheads exactly. on the YZ870. What, were they Imperial too? Metric? They would have been Imperial. Imperial. Yeah. Okay. So they bought them from the same place. This there is, you go. This is a cool kit to have. Isn't it? Very cool kit. Big win for Phil, that one. Now, Phil brought us something else over. I'll put mm. this away very carefully. No, it's okay. It's tough. <laughs> it's an AE. It's, it's never that tough. Care. You're terrible. Yeah, I know. You're terrible, Muriel. That's how I roll. Mm. You know that. That's an RC10 as well. There's another RC10. It's Jump. a different flavour. Yeah. Jump forward. What? 15 odd years? Yeah. This is a 1991 World Car. Is that right? Yes. And this one here is not an original. This is a re -ray. This is so the like first of the re -rays. So I call this, this a Stealth Worlds, right? Still has a... Three-gear transmission. An yep. aluminium... Uh, pressed chassis, mm. which I find comical, but that's really cool. Still has, has the same screws. Yeah. So these were done uh, Imperial too. Yep. And completely different uh, geometry. So the, this is, this is the Brian like Kinwald world car. Though. It's when he won the Worlds in 91. Yeah. And it's this it. this was released in this was released in nine, uh, 2010 ish. And Phil said he picked mm. this up in America in to about 2015, 2016. Right. He reckons he paid 159 USD. Yeah. Mm. And that's when our dollar was stronger than American. Yeah, because they produced these and they they were, the, the market mm. wasn't there. They, yeah. were, they were way, way too early. And I did the same as Phil. I bought two of them when they got down to about 160 bucks. Because yep. I thought, that's a bargain. Yep. Although at the time there was no vintage scene, I just bought them because, oh, cool, it's an RC10 World Cup. And then one up until, I want to say, very, very recently, like maybe last year, people would pay like thousands for that, right? Yep, because they're now much sought after. Much sought after. Because unlike what Associated do now, which is build a billion of everything and say they're only going to do a few, back then they didn't make a whole lot. So now they're very much sought after. and I won't be selling mine anytime soon. But watch this space. So I've it's got quite, a feeling there's another one coming before the end of the year. So it's very familiar, but it's quite different. Next week. Mm. So the chassis is basically the same. Yep. Okay, your bulkheads are the same. Well, the front it's end kick plate. Out. Yes. And then the arms are different. Yep. Yes. The shocks are different. It's wider. You've got wider inline frame. stub axles. Yep. Yes. Because they're offset before. And rear suspension's all different. Yeah. And then the stuff is so more capable. Course. This is a very capable car, even now. But it's amazing how it's like evolved, right? Mm. It hasn't changed a huge amount. Massively from 1984 to 1991. Mm. It's it shows they got it right. Haven't they? And I think they went. When was the B2? Went, they went, when from, they go went, went from this to the, um, to the graphite. graphite, TQ graphite, which is the same as the uh, Fan RC kit that I bought in mm. a while ago. Well, they copied Fan RC, yeah. frankly. Yeah. And so then they. Then they went to B2s. When the original Worlds cars came out, the Stealth Worlds cars, they were available in aluminium or graphite. Mm. They were available at the same time. Yeah. Thanks.